Let's take a look at the sales order functionality in Job Pro. So when we're on the home screen, we can click on the quick view arrow under sales orders to see any sales orders that are current or outstanding in the system. So we can then click on a sales order to view that. The sales orders module is ideal for a couple of reasons. One of them is simply if you just want to create an order with all the details for the customer and then you can email or print that order where you can get them to sign the sales order and send that back to you. But the main use for sales orders is like the central point of anything that you're selling, whether it's a service or a product, where you can then invoice and ship out items from the sales order itself. You can also part invoice and ship as well. So on the sales order screen here we can see columns for shipping and separate columns for invoicing. And you can also do various reports like a back order report to see what's outstanding from a shipping or invoicing point of view for all your sales orders in the system. So it's a little bit like your work in progress as well where you can get financial information of what sales orders are on, what's remaining to be invoiced and shipped etc. A sales order could be created from a number of places. It could be created from within the sales orders file where we create a blank sales order and then assign it to the customer or to a job for example. Or also a sales order could have been created from a quote or from a job or from the customer screen directly in companies and contacts. So for this sales order let's assign it to a customer And we can change the address if we like, we can add in a shipping address, we can change the contact in relation to the sales order. So looking at the top of the screen we've got various information like contact details, the status of a sales order, we can link the sales order to a job, we've got the due date, the payment terms which automatically would come from the customer's sales account if they're set up there the default tax code as well from the customer's sales account so for any line items that we add to the sales order it will default to their relevant tax code and rate we can put in a customer PO number if they've issued one and we can also specify our rep identity if you've got multiple identities in the system like multi companies or stores or departments and also if this sales order is relevant to stock and you have multiple stock locations in the system well then you can specify which stock location is the relevant one for any outgoing stock from the sales order. So down the lower end of the screen we've got our line entry and text entry tabs. So the line entry tab is where you'd enter in product codes or service codes and descriptions. While on the text entry tab it's more about entering in paragraphs of text, details of what you're selling, whether it's products or services. So let's have a look at line entry first. We'll add a product. And we'll enter in a quantity of say two. We can specify the category for that item as well. Or alternatively, if you're setting up all your products in the products module, you can put in default categories for those as well, including services in the products module. There's also a stock view tab here, where over on the right hand side we can then see the stock available for a particular item at this location. So we can see that there's in stock 13 available tree so that probably means that there's 10 on sales orders currently and we can also see that there's a number on purchase orders from here we can also create a PO relating to the sales order also especially if you have multiple line items on the sales order you can refresh the sell prices based on up-to-date pricing that's put into the products module so to do that you'd simply click on the link and then click on OK to refresh any lines that are on that sales order. 
So the text entry tab, basically it's the same data that you're looking at on the line entry tab, except you can add in as much text as you like here, or you can visually see more text. When you print off a sales order, it's basically using the same line items. You can also specify a different currency for the sales order and it'll default to the rate that you've specified in setup or you can enter in your own rate for that different currency. So from a sales order we have a number of options when it comes to shipping and invoicing. We could simply we can go into the options screen and we can create a sales invoice, create a shipping or create a part invoice and shipment from there as well. But it's actually easier to do it from the data entry screens. So on the ship and invoice tab, we have the ability to here to click on part invoice or ship, create a full invoice. Also you can do a back orders report from an invoicing point of view. And then on the right hand side, again we can part invoice and ship, create a full shipment or do a back orders report based on shipping for the full system. Okay, so let's do a part invoice and ship. And for example, we could just invoice out and ship a quantity of one of this item. Let's say that's the only one we had in stock. So we want to send that out to the customer. And what we can do at this point is we could just create an invoice, just create a shipment, or create both. So let's create both. We click continue and we're prompted to specify the serial number for that item because that item is tracked by serial numbers in stock. So let's pick that item there, click continue. Okay, so both the invoice and the shipping record have been created at this point. And to view either of those we can click on an arrow. So if we have a quick look at the shipping record that's created. So this is automatically set to complete and we can then see the item that's been shipped. And we could print that document as well if you wanted to send that out with the actual shipping of the item. We can see on the shipping record that it was created from a sales order, but it's also linked to the invoice that was created at the same time as the part invoice and shipping. So the quickest way to go to that invoice is by clicking on this link here. And on the invoice screen we can see the item, we can see that it's shipped, we can see that this sales invoice was created from the sales order. So there's a connection between sales orders, sales invoices and shipping. Everything is tied together very well. So let's go back to the actual sales order itself and back to the line entry tab. So here we can see that there's a balance of one remaining to be shipped and invoiced. So for here what we could do if we're shipping and invoicing out the balance we can simply go back in and do another part invoice and put in our quantity and click continue. But there are various options depending on what you need to do. Like you could for example just do a part invoice on its own or a part ship you know, maybe you ship out first and you don't invoice until the end of the everything that is shipped out. So you can alternatively use that method where everything might be shipped and nothing might be invoiced and then you could go and create a full invoice for that sales order. So multiple ways to invoice and ship out from a sales order. But let's just go in here and we'll do another part invoice and ship for the balance. We we'll select our serial number, click continue, and we get a message saying that this sales order is now fully shipped and invoiced. Would you like to set the status to complete? So we click on yes. And then we're back at the sales order screen and we can see the additional invoice and shipping record that's been created. So that completes fully this sales order. Let's have a quick look and set up at the different options relating to sales orders. Now all this functionality is covered in a separate video tutorial 
under setup and preferences for sales orders but if we have a quick look here we can see for example that there's a default when part invoicing and shipping a sales order to default the option to either create invoice create shipment or create both also when invoicing and shipping relating to a sales order there's an option to auto set the sales order status to complete so we can either specify yes that it automatically does it no that it doesn't or in the case that we just saw a minute ago ask the user and we selected yes also there's an option to allow set sales order status to complete when and we can set that to always when it's fully invoiced fully shipped or both so what this controls is that a user can't actually set the status to complete unless it's one of these criteria and that's important if for example you ship out first but you don't necessarily invoice out until the end of all the shipping and that you want to make sure that no sales orders slip through without being fully invoiced as well so let's go back into sales orders so the next tab on the sales order entry screen is the documents tab so you can link any documents to a sales order for example an excel file that you might have entered in some costing details or anything at all relating to the sales order and it can be an existing document that's already linked in the system or a new document that you might want to store in a new record in the documents module linked to this sales order so all the document related functionality is covered in a separate video tutorial so we don't necessarily need to go that through here and on the other tab in sales orders we've got options like the line entry and text entry option so in setup you can specify that when you create sales orders do you normally default the sales order to line entry or text entry so depending on that then the default tab will be one of these so in here you can change it at the sales order level as well also if there's a fax number linked to the customer it will appear here where you can create a fax you can put in a heading that appears on the sales order you include your signature on a sales order so let's click on that and if we click on print we can see the signature then for the hour rep on that sales order we can also include a sign off section on the sales order so if we unclick that then the sign off section doesn't appear on the sales order we can also use own letterhead which means that when you print the document it leaves the top area blank so it doesn't include your identity logo company name and address and you can print on pre-printed stationery so we can also enter comments on the sales order and in setup you can specify the default comments that would be pulled into every sales order so you can also edit the comments on the actual sales order as well and they'll appear then in here just above the signature section if the signature section is being included you've also got a communications portal just like in every module where you can see any notes or communications relating to the sales order where you can create an email letter or fax from here relating to contact details on the sales order or just create a general note or an internal message to another job pro user relating to the sales order on the right hand side we've got a commission section where you can specify the name of the person that gets commission relating to this sales order and then the sale amount and cost of sale automatically come from the line items but you can manually override these as well and then it shows you the profit for commission so you can enter in the rate and whether the commission is based on the sale amount or the profit so depending on the name or the employee that you specify for commission if you've set in their employee record a default rate for commission then that will have appeared in here automatically and then that will give you your commission amount and you can flag whether it's been paid or not and there are various commission reports also available on the options screen and lastly on the other tab 
we've got the three custom fields that you'll see in every module where in setup you can specify the, the name that you want to call custom 1, custom 2 and custom 3 fields for every new record that you create in sales orders. So on the list screen in sales orders we can do searches, we can sort. It's a good way to then to look at, for example, if you want to pull up a quick report on maybe a found set of sales orders for a date range or for a specific customer, and then you can print off that and it include, it include some financial details on the actual printed version as well. So then on the options tab in sales orders, we've got various find options and then lots of different reports including customer related reports report by customer detailed by customer summary or by area detailed and area summary so the area is something that you specify for each customer in the company's module we've also got product sales order reports here so by product detail by product summary by the product category detailed and category summary but remember that products are not just necessarily physical items but they can also be services as well. Then there's two back orders reports, one of them based on sales invoices, anything that needs to be invoiced out for the set of current sales orders and also a back orders report based on anything that needs to be shipped. So let's take a quick look at the invoicing one and that will show you a list of any sales orders on the system at the moment that still have balances remaining to be invoiced and you can use the arrow key to browse through the pages of this report and then you can see your total at the bottom and you have the same option then from a shipping point of view and you can see the balance to be shipped for all sales orders in the system Then we've got our commission reports down the bottom left and in the middle of the screen we've got options for the current record. We can print an order, email, print a label, print a label using the shipping address, create an email letter or fax, but we can also create a purchase order from the current sales order. We can create an invoice, we can create a full shipping as well, we can also part invoice and ship from here. And then for the found set of sales orders, we have the ability to do things like print all the sales orders, print mini list of the sales orders, which is like a small report, print labels, or print labels for the, using the shipping address on the found set of sales orders. So lastly, if we look at the various places in the system that display sales order portals, for example, the customer screen. If we go into companies, and we click on for a customer the sales orders tab so we can see and create any sales orders here relating to that company or customer the same option in the contacts module if you sell directly to individuals you can click on sales orders also in the jobs module there's a sales orders tab so any sales orders relating to a job will appear in this screen so we could do a search here and find anything with a reference number and then you can see a job here with, some with a sales order on it. Also at the job level you can specify whether you want to include the costs from the sales order line items on a job in addition to other costs. So in this case we have this turned off and set up and that's why this is dimmed out. And also in the products module there's a sales orders tab so at a product level you can see any sales orders that that item has been used on. So that pretty much covers the sales orders module and functionality in JobPro.